All right, hello everybody. My name is Dan Pierce. I'm the director of the Heartwood documentary series, which looks at the impacts of industrial logging on the BC landscape, uh, as well as the economic decline of the industry and solutions and alternatives for how we could be doing logging better in a way that actually benefits communities and ecosystems and uh, is in a spirit of decolonization. What I want to look at today, though, is these widespread floods, these devastating floods that are happening across the province right now. I'm just going to scroll through some photos so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm sure we've all seen the images on the news, entire towns and cities inundated, um, and evacuations happening in Princeton and Merritt. Uh, entire sections of the Coquihalla Highway have been completely washed out. So it's just utter devastation happening across the interior of the province right now. Um, I'm seeing a lot of talk on the news about, you know, the atmospheric river and uh, extreme weather and, and this unprecedented rain event and, and some connections to the climate crisis. And, and that's all correct and fine. But there's another side to the story that is not being told, at least I'm not seeing it told in the mainstream media. And, and that is the connection between these floods and extensive clear-cut logging across BC. And so I want to show you what I'm talking about. And and first of all, this is the area that we're going to be looking at is this red zone here that's uh, under flood warning. Both Merritt and Princeton ha have been evacuated. They're totally underwater. So what's going on in this area here? Is it just that it's just an unprecedented rain event and that's the end of the story? Or is there more to it than that? And I would argue that there's a lot more to it than that. So let's take a look at Merritt. Merritt is in this little opening here. You can kind of see it uh, at the confluence of these two rivers here. And this is the Google Earth uh, time lapse tool, Google Earth Engine. Uh, and you can see there's a timeline along the bottom here that starts at 1984. So we're looking at Merritt BC and satellite imagery in 1984. And as I start stepping through time, you're going to see the landscape change. Um, but before I do that, just take note of how much dark green is all around Merritt right at this in back in 1984 uh, there was a lot of healthy forests on the landscape obviously there's some logging happening these these are you know there's already some extensive clear cutting happening in this sort of patchwork fashion um, but uh, as we move forward through time just watch what happens and you'll see roads new roads get punched in new clear cuts open up and all through the 90s it's kind of happening at a pretty steady rate you know uh it's uh continuously chipping away at the green we see the green get gobbled up by clear cuts but as we get into the 2000s this is when the pine beetle epidemic really took hold and the logging industry was basically given carte blanche to log as much as they can, as fast as they can, and what they called a salvage operation. And so you see this incredible acceleration happening through the 2000s and the 20 teens, and right up to the present day, or at least until last year, the latest imagery is in 2020. And by 2020, it's just so much of the forest has completely been gobbled up by logging. And just to show you how startling of a transformation that is, I'm going to jump back to 1984. That was before, and this is after. Before and after. So just an absolutely breathtaking transformation to the landscape. And just look, I'm not a scientist, but there's no way that removing that much forest off the landscape doesn't impact the hydrology of a place. There's no way this isn't happening, having an impact on the floods. And yet the, the attention continuously seems to be on the rain, on the rain event, as if this was just an act of God. No, we made this pro problem much, much worse. And, and, I'm not saying that this flood wouldn't have happened. I'm not saying that this, you know, that there wasn't an unprecedented rainfall. Like both those things can be true. And we've also removed so much forest off the landscape that was once doing the job of sucking that water off the landscape, 
sucking it up into the tree roots, um, the mushroom mycelium, we're holding water in the soil and slowly releasing it over time, right? When you remove that much forest off the landscape, you're going to have water running off the hillsides much more quickly, not to mention you've got extensive road networks. I'm just going to zoom into one area here actually and just do this one more time because you'll see these extensive road networks get punched in into these forests and of course water flows down the roads and the ditches and it all gets channeled down into uh, downwards uh, into the river system uh, caking with it uh, mud and silt and soil and yeah it's uh, it's not just the clear cuts it's also the road networks and then of course uh, as we get into the 2000s this unbelievable acceleration and you know people are going to say well what were we supposed to do just leave all that dead pine on the landscape well like give me a break it wasn't all dead pine there was lots of healthy wood on the landscape other than pine there was fir uh there was deciduous trees uh and yet the the logging industry was allowed to just come in and take all of it if there was even just a small percentage of dead pine they just took all of it and logged at these vastly unsustainable levels and now we're starting to see the impacts of that just so you know i'm not cherry picking you know so let's take a look at princeton princeton is also underwater this is 1984 again the forests around princeton there's some logging but there's lots and lots of green healthy forest on the landscape now let's move forward through time all right new roads get punched in new clear cuts get opened up Bit by bit, the forest just gets eaten up by clear cuts all through the 90s, right? See this happening. But then as we get into the 2000s, this acceleration, right? There's, if there was any amount of dead pine, they would just come in and take all of it. And it was just, it's just utter devastation there. Um, you know, the idea that you can plant new trees and that it will just replace what was there is a delusion right and and even like those areas that were logged back in 1984 right so those areas now have greened up a little bit but those forests are only you know what 35 years old now and they're not fully mature yet they're not doing the job of uh, sucking the water off the landscape and releasing it slowly over time. Um, also, we we pretty much remove all the deciduous forests uh, from the landscape and we don't let those grow. We just replace it with these single-aged conifer plantations, um, which are more susceptible to wildfire. Uh, but the big story here is just that so much forest has been removed and there's very little wood left and there's very few trees left on the landscape doing the job of filtering the water and and once again this flood may have happened and it may have been an unprecedented rainfall but we've made this flooding so much worse by removing the earth's natural uh, water filtration system off the earth right so um, and in case you're skeptical of me, I mean, I'm just like a Vancouver environmental type guy. It's not just me saying this. I've got published studies here. These, these are from uh, UBC Forestry, uh, basically confirming everything that I'm saying. New study challenges a well-established wisdom on how logging affects flood risk. This is, uh, you know, a pretty jargony article, but I'll just jump to the key takeaways here. Um, tree removal increased the magnitude and frequency of floods across not only small and medium periods but also large events floods can be sensitive to even small rates of forest harvesting depending on location within the watershed and depending on the extent of harvested area and the size of flood events larger harvest or cut rates resulted in two three and four fold increases in the frequency of large floods this is what we're seeing right now the chickens are coming home to roost of this decade or more of just basically removing vast quantities of timber off the land base it, it, it's a mess out there and th this story is not being told all the focus is on the atmospheric river there's some connection to climate change and that's not incorrect and i don't mean to diminish the role of climate change but climate change isn't going away and and what we do on the landscape 
um, is going to determine whether or not we see more uh, and worse floods in the future. And I think that if we were to actually invest in replanting and regenerating our forests and not just using them as a cash cow for multinational timber companies, uh, we'd see... Uh, you know, we'd actually be able to protect ourselves from the, these types of events. The other thing that I just want to say here is that, like, for all of the, you know, defenders of the logging industry who are complaining about protecting a, you know, a, a, a minuscule amount of, of old growth that's left, just that tiny, those tiny little uh, scraps of old growth that are left on the landscape and saying that this is what's killing jobs. No, no, no. This is what's killing jobs right there's no there's no valuable wood left on the landscape it's basically all been taken the logging industry knows it that's why you get companies that are basically relocating to farther south where there's still wood left right this is why mills are closing down uh this is why uh the logging industry has been in a steady state of contraction over the past few decades is we're running out of wood right we've seen tens we've seen the loss of half of all forestry jobs since the late 90s early 2000s and that's because we're running out of wood and you know and just to cap things off here you know these devastating flood events it doesn't end up being the logging companies who has to pay for them it's the people of bc who have to pay for them uh like we saw in the city of grand forks uh which was uh experienced devastating floods uh, in, in recent years uh and with the same connection to clear cutting and the watersheds you can go on google earth check it out for yourself uh the boundary watershed has also been turned into swiss cheese by clear cut logging and um the 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 people uh, like a whole section of the town of grand forks was forced to relocate some people had to leave the town forever some of them got bought out by the city at like you know a fraction of what their homes were worth before the floods and that's why the people of grand forks have actually filed a class action lawsuit against the province of bc and the forestry companies for decimating their watershed and creating this incredible amount of loss and damage to uh, their town and, and and we're seeing it now on a grand scale across the province and you know a full accounting of this uh, this destruction isn't going to be done for some time but I would expect that we're likely going to see and should see uh, more class action lawsuits like this or an expansion of this one um, you know the logging industry needs to uh, compensate uh, the 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 victims of these floods, the people who have uh, lost everything due to these floods for uh, decades of decimating the watershed, and the province of BC needs to uh, pay for that as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's the point that that's the big point that I wanted to make here was that. You know, it's more than just an unprecedented weather event that we're seeing here. This is a man-made disaster caused by extensive overcutting and extensive clear cuts all across BC. This is not, I didn't just cherry pick these two places. They're particularly bad. They're particularly relevant to what we're seeing right now. You go on this Google Earth engine, you look anywhere in BC and uh, like, it's all like this, you know, uh, it's, it's absolutely brutal, you know. And we need to start talking about it. I'd like to see more of this on the news. Journalists, if you're out there, talk to hydrologists, talk to forest uh, ecologists, and start bringing in this part of the story. This is more than just a weather event. This is a man-made disaster. And that's the big point that I wanted to make here today. Um, thank you so much for staying with me and, uh, please share this far and wide. I'm going to re-release my short film waterlogged with an updated ending all about the Grand Forks floods and the connection to clear cutting and flooding, uh, in BC. Uh, and yeah, that'll be out, uh, today or tomorrow. So, uh, that's all I wanted to say for today. Thank you for tuning in. And my heart goes out to all the people who are suffering, uh, as a result of these devastating floods all across the province, uh, all the best to you and take care.